Well, Revelation reminds us that Genesis started all of this and Revelation finishes it. What do I mean by that? The creation of heaven and earth, Genesis 1.1. A new heaven and earth, Revelation 21.1. The earth is created in chapter 1, verse 1 of Genesis. The earth passes away and a new one comes in 21.1 of Revelation. Uh, there's a river in Eden in Genesis 2.10. There's a river of life in Revelation 22.1. Uh, the death starts in chapter 2, verse 17, and there's no more death in Revelation 21.4. The first marriage is in Genesis 2.18. The last marriage, Revelation 21.9. And I could give you pages of what begins in Genesis, God completes in Revelation well, let's talk about some of the joys of heaven. I remember as a little boy, we used to sing a song, I'm going to heaven, can't wait, gonna see Jesus, can't wait. But you know, the older I get, in fact, I remember when I was counting down the days to marry Bonnie, I was just hoping the Lord wouldn't return before we got married. People have all these different feelings when you think about heaven, because we're not sure. Well, one writer, Dave Hunt, said, For most Christians, heaven is a place where they desire to get to eventually, but not until they've lived out their full days on earth, experienced all their hopes, ambitions, interests. And contrary to what Christ taught and the early church lived, most believers are really bound up in the life they aspire to live in this world. To be suddenly raptured to heaven would be for most Christians an unwelcomed interruption to their earthly plans. That's because most of us have not embraced what it's like to be in our Father's house. What's it gonna be like? Let me just show you some of the ways the Bible's revealed to it. Do you see that slide? That's the breastplate of the high priest. Do you see the 12 stones? Upper left one is kind of a golden brown. The top middle one is green. The one to the right is a ruby red. Then you get to the diamonds. Look at the purples and greens and pinks and all of the flecks and colors. Those 12 stones of the high priest's breastplate that is described in the book of Exodus, those are the primary colors of heaven. The beauty, the, the crystal sea around that throne we talked about about 15 hours ago in chapter 4, the, the lightning emanating, the sound of the thunder, the, the flaming uh, seraphim surrounding in that river of fire, all of that is some of the beauty of heaven. But what is all that beauty for? Well, it says in Revelation 11 verses 15 through 19 that God says that the, the great focus of heaven, of his creation, of his going with us through life, of his designing our DNA and all the laws of the physical universe, and the fact that he came and found us and completed us and is never going to change as the Almighty God should prompt worship. Look at Revelation 11. We covered that many days ago, but I remind you of the emphasis that heaven is going to kind of pour into our hearts of worship Chapter 11, verse 15, And the seventh angel sounded, and voices in heaven said, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Verse 16, And the 24 elders who sat before God fell on their faces and worshipped and said, We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, look at this, who is and was and is to come, the never-changing one, and it says that those who fear your name, both small and great, are the ones that are bowing around his throne, that he's completed, he's found and befriended, that he designed, that he's causing all things to work together for good as our creator. Do you see how these seven elements of heaven are really just the basis of worship? It says in Revelation 21 and verse 2, that the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride. I clipped this out. There was a, one of the authors uh, down in this classroom, if you could see over here, I have many, many shelves of books that direction. And one of my favorite authors, his name was Dr. Harry Rimmer. He was an amazing scientist, very brilliant. 
And in his lifetime, he wrote many books. But as he was nearing the end of his life in 1953, about 67 years ago, only a week before his death, he was listening to a radio preacher preaching about heaven. And a week before he died, he wrote this letter and mailed it. And actually, it arrived to this radio preacher's studio after that great author and scientist, Harry Rimmer, died. And this is what uh, that radio preacher, his name was Dr. Charles Fuller, who had just started a radio series on heaven. This is what he read the next week on his show. And I'll read it to you. He said, Dr. Rimmer writes, Dear Dr. Fuller, Next Sunday, you're going to talk about heaven, and I'm interested in that place because I've held a clear title deed to a bit of property there for more than 55 years. I did not buy it. It was given to me without money, without price. The donor purchased it for me at tremendous sacrifice. I'm not holding it for, for speculation. The title is not transferable, and it's not vacant. For more than a half a century, I've been sending materials out of which God, the great architect and builder of the universe, has building, been building a home for me, a home which will never be remodeled or repaired because it rests upon the rock of ages. Fire can't destroy it. Floods will never wash it away. No locks or bolts will ever be placed on its doors because no vicious person can ever enter that land where my father's house is. There is a valley of deep shadow between me and the place where I live in California and that place to which I shall journey very shortly. I can't reach my home in the city of God without passing through the dark valley of shadows, but I'm not afraid because the best friend I've ever had will guide me through that same long valley. He went through that valley long ago and drove away its gloom. He has stuck by me through the thick and thin since we first became acquainted 55 years ago. I hold his promise in printed form, the word of God. He will never leave or forsake me, nor leave me alone. He will be with me as I walk through the valley of shadows. I will not lose my way when I'm with him. In Revelation 21, we find Jesus doing what Harry Rimmer so confidently trusted the Lord to do, preparing a place for us.